Hello and welcome to this Parapack Medic 200D instruction video. Today we're going to be talking about what all these connections are, all the outside, where things are, what they do, and as well as when to use this and maybe when not to use this, as well as some of the limitations of this ventilator. So initially, if you look at the one side, there are quite clear instructions on how to use the ventilator. There is a from one to eight system that tells you exactly pretty much what to do, how it works, how not to do it, and the issues that you may run into. So if you're not sure, pick it up, read it, it'll tell you what to do. In the white box, it tells you um, rates and settings that you can put on patients. So adult is in red, child is in purple, and infant is in blue. On this side, we have the low pressure hose which is for connecting to the patient. This is your alarm. This is your high pressure hose. And this is an external pressure sensor. This is a pneumatically powered ventilator, which means that the O2 cylinder or the gas cylinder that you are using um, drives the ventilator, which means that as soon as the cylinder empties, your ventilator stops. That's really important to acknowledge. This is also a volume control ventilator, not a pressure control ventilator, which means that we can control the volume. We control the tidal volume and it tells us how much pressure. You get pressure control ventilators that then tell us the volume. This is the volume type. So up here we have our frequency or our respiration rate or breath rate per minute. So an adult would be in the red, a child would be um, in the purple and the infant would be in the blue. So children breathe faster, adults breathe slower. The heart symbol here is actually a CPR rate. So that'll give a ventilation rate at five to six breaths. Sorry, one breath every five to six seconds. The tidal volume is how much breath or how much ventilation we want to give in a ventilation. So typically speaking, that's about seven mils per kg. So whatever the patient's weight, so let's say they weigh 70 or 80, uh, we can pretty much round that down to about 500 plus or minus a little bit but the maths can be done specifically. So if you're dealing with a child, it'll be more important that you get that very accurate. Air mix, no air mix, what does this mean? So if I put it on no air mix, it means that the ventilator will be giving 100% air, which is sometimes what we want. But however, sometimes we don't want to give 100% air because there isn't really a ventilation problem, there isn't really an oxygenation problem, and so forth, we can actually change it to air mix. What that does is it then gives 50% um, O2. And importantly, what that does is it actually prolongs the life of your cylinder by three. So if you have a cylinder and it's only going to last another 20 minutes or half an hour, this will increase the length your cylinder will last by three times. That's also important because remember the cylinder runs off pressure, which means that when the pressure empties, your ventilator stops. So increasing the length that you can ventilate, especially for long distance transports, using up less air is an important concept to consider. This is your pressure gauge. It tells you how much pressure is being um, administered. On the top left here, we have a relief pressure or a alarm pressure. This can be set to 35 plus minus a bit. Different um, textbooks will say different um, pressures. What's important is that we don't give too much pressure and some patients require more pressure. And so you know, we don't really want pressures to go more than 35, 40. Um, what a test that you could normally do is to assess the plateau pressure on a ventilator. So unfortunately with this ventilator, you can't, but on most ventilators, there is a way to hold a inhalation. So there's an inhalation button, which then holds the patient to inhalate. And then we can assess how much pressure and we're not wanting that to go above 30. Then with your um, dial at the bottom left, we have um, demand and CMV. So demand allows the patient to just breathe freely through the machine. Um, the machine does not assist with any sort of ventilation, so that's one of the limitations. And CMV stands for controlled mandatory ventilation. So it is controlled and it is mandatory. Um, if the patient is breathing and the patient happens to inhale while this um, gives the ventilation, there'll be this dis-syncing between the patient and the ventilator, which causes multiple issues, including um, increased intracranial pressure, increased interthoracic pressure, which causes a, a magnitude of problems. And so really this patient should be used for a person who is apneic, so a patient who's in cardiac arrest or has actually come out of cardiac arrest and now is in rusk and still has no breathing um, ability or no, um, no breathing effort or if they've been RSI and now they're paralyzed, this ventilator could also do that job. This doesn't give any pressure support. So we can just quickly discuss some of the things it doesn't do or can't do. So this doesn't assist a breath. So if the patient is breathing, 
and we well, okay, or well, they're breathing, we better not put it onto CMV, so we leave it on demand. There's no assistance, there's, there's no help. So they're breathing through these tiny little, like what we could say is like a straw, it's like trying to breathe through a straw. It means they have to put a lot of effort into trying to breathe and it doesn't actually assist them with that ventilation. Other ventilators, you can set a pressure support. So really there is quite a lack in this ventilator. The other thing that this ventilator can't do that's really critical is PEEP. So that's positive end expiratory pressure. There is no option for PEEP on this ventilator. You do get a PEEP valve that fits over the top here. I will overlay a picture of a PEEP valve. This allows us to set the positive end expiratory pressure. So this is the pressure remaining in the lungs or in the alveoli after the ventilation has finished. So positive end expiratory. So the, at the end of the exhalation, there's still this positive pressure. If you were to connect a PEEP valve to a balloon, the balloon will not actually completely deflate. Um, it will drop down to whatever pressure we've set. And that's normally about five centimeters of water. That is about normal. Um, intrinsic PEEP, because we have PEEP as people. Um, the mechanism of PEEP in the body is your vocal cords, and so if someone has got an endotracheal tube in their trachea, they have no PEEP, um, and that makes oxygenating patients very challenging, and therefore a ventilator like this should really have a PEEP valve, and we should really be very aware of the limitations of this ventilator. So let's just talk about these indicators and alarms and lights. So at the top here, we have three. The middle one is a, a indicator of just a normal ventilation. So each time it gives a ventilation, it'll flash green, and that's great. That's what we want to see. On the right is a low pressure alarm, and on the, the left is a high pressure alarm. So if this gets disconnected, so that's going to the patient, or if there's a problem with this, or the tubes come out, or something's gone wrong, you'll have a low pressure alarm. A high pressure alarm will be the opposite. Then we're having high pressures in the ventilation. So either the patient's you know, generated a, um, a tension pneumothorax, or there is some serious um, lung pathology, or there's something wrong with the patient, or there's something wrong with your vent settings, um, it's going to tell you a high pressure. It means that there's now too much pressure. We're going above the 35 or 40 that we have set. The bottom left is the battery. It says it'll flash green if the battery's happy or flash red if the battery's not happy. The bottom indicator is the opposite of the top one, and that is when the patient inhales. So if you see this bottom one flashing green, it actually means the patient has spontaneously started to breathe, um, which, like we said, isn't great. Um, and then, therefore, putting it on CMV is a bit more challenging. Uh, the bottom button here is to mute the alarm. So I'll turn it on. It'll make some beeping noise. And then I will kind of tell you more about that. So as you can see, it did its whole little startup system. Now it's complaining of low pressure, which obviously makes sense. There is no pressure. This indicator is also red. So when this is red, it means that there is low pressure. You can mute the alarm because I'm trying to talk to you. So it's not going to keep beeping at me. So this, this um, ball will also turn white when it is connected to high pressure. And then it goes red when it loses pressure. So you also have a better indicator of when there is connected pressure. Maybe your cylinder is emptied or maybe um, there's been a disconnection or maybe someone switched off the cylinder. You can tell immediately if there is pressure or if there's no pressure. So there we go, we have discussed all of these dials on the top. We've spoken about the alarms. I'm just gonna switch it off. And to, I mean, I'm not sure if I made it very clear, but if you wanted to start ventilating, you actually need to turn it onto CMV and then it starts to ventilate. Yeah, so we have discussed all that's on the top here. There's instructions on how to use the ventilator. On here, low pressure, high pressure, that's your alarm valve. And this is a pressure sensor that can be connected to the mask, which assesses ambient pressure. And interestingly, this is a ventilator that has been cleared to be working in an MRI, which as long as it has a Tesla of less than three, um, it is safe to use.